Hi guys, my name is Tiffany and I'm going to be your guys' stage direction reader for uh, Twelfth Night. So, here's Twelfth Night. Enter Orsino, Duke of Illyria, Curio, and other lords. If music be the food of love, play on. Give me excess of it, that surfeiting the appetite may sicken and so die. That strain again, it had a dying fall. Oh, it came over my ear like the sweet sound that breathes upon a bank of violets, stealing and giving odor. Enough, no more. Tis not so sweet now as it was before. O oh, spirit of love, how quick and fresh art thou, that notwithstanding thy capacity receiveth as the sea, not enters there, of what validity and pitch soever, but falls into abatement and low price even in a minute. So full of shapes is fancy that it alone is high fantastical. Will you go hunt, my lord? What, Kyria? The heart. Why, so I do, the noblest that I have. Oh, when mine eyes did see Olivia first, Methought she purged the air of pestilence. That instant was I turned into a heart, and my desires, like fell and cruel hounds, ever since pursue me. Enter Valentine. How now? What news from her? So please, my lord, I might not be admitted, but from her handmaid do return this answer. The element itself, till seven years' heat, shall not behold her face at ample view, but like a cloistress she will with veiled walk, and water once a day her chamber round with eye offending brine. All this to season a brother's dead love, which she would keep fresh and lasting in her sad remembrance. Oh, she that hath a heart of that fine frame to pay this debt of love but to a brother. How will she love when the rich golden shaft hath killed the flock of all affections else that live in her, when liver, brain, and heart, these sovereign thrones are all supplied and fill her sweet perfections with oneself king? Away before me to sweet bed of flowers. Love thoughts lie rich when canopied with bowers. They exit, enter Viola and the captain. What country, friends, is this? This is Illyria, lady. And what should I do in Illyria? My brother, he is in Elysium. Perchance he is not drowned. What think you, sailors? It is perchance that you yourself were saved. Oh, my poor brother, and so perchance may he be. True, madam. And to comfort you with chance, assure yourself, after our ship did split, when you and those poor number were saved with you, hung in our driving boat, I saw your brother, most provident in peril, bind himself to a strong mast that lived upon the sea, where, like Arion on the dolphin's back, I saw him hold acquaintance, acquaintance with the waves, so long as I could see. For saying so, oh, for saying so, there's gold. Mine own escape unfoldeth to my hope. For two, thy speech serves for authority, the like of him. Knowest thou this country? Aye, madam. Well, for I was bred and born not three hours' travel from this very place. Who governs here? A noble duke, in nature as his name. What is his name? Orsino. Orsino. I have heard my father name him. He was a bachelor then. And so, and so is now, or was so very late. But for but a month ago, I went from hence, and then... "'Twas fresh and murmur, as you know, what great winds do, the less will prattle of, that he did seek the love of fair Olivia. "'What's she?' "'A virtuous maid, the daughter of a count that died some twelfth month since, then leaving her in the protection of his son, her brother, who surely also died, for whose dear love, they say, she hath adjourned the sight in company of men. "'Oh, that I served that lady, and might not be delivered to the world till I have made my own occasion mellow, what my estate is.' that were hard to compass, because she will admit no kind of suit. No, not the Duke's. There is a fair behavior in me, Captain, and though that nature with a beauteous wall doth off close in pollution, yet of thee I will believe that thou hast a mind that suits with this thy fair and outward character. I prithee, and I'll pay thee bounteously, conceal me what I am, and be my aid, for such disguise as happily shall become the form of my intent. I'll serve this duke. Thou shalt present me as an eunuch to him. It may be worth thy pains, for I can sing and speak to him in many sorts of music that will allow me very worth his service. What else may hap to time I will commit. Only shape thou thy silence to my wit. Be you his eunuch, and your mute I'll be. When my tongue blabs, then let mine eyes not see. 
I thank thee. Lead me on. They exit. Enter Sir Toby and Mariah. What a plague means my niece to take death of her brother thus. I am sure she's an enemy to life. By my troth, Sir Toby, you must come in earlier nights. Your cousin, my lady, takes great expectations to your ill hours. Why? Let her accept before accepted. Aye, but you must confine yourself within the modest limits of order. Confine? I'll confine myself no finer than I am. These clothes are good enough to drink it, and so be these boots too. And they be not. Let them hang themselves in their own straps. That quaffing and drinking will undo you. I heard my lady talk of it yesterday, and of a foolish knight that you brought in one night here to be her wooer. Who? Sir Andrew Aguecheek? Aye, he. Ah, uh, he's as tall as a man and, and, as in any Illyria. What's that to the purpose? Why, he has 3,000 ducats a year. Aye, but he'll have but a year in all these ducats. He's a very fool and prodigal. Five that you'll say so. He plays all the, the, the game boys and speaks three or four languages word for word without book and hath all the good gifts of the nature. He hath indeed, almost natural, for besides that he's a fool, he's a great quarreler. And but that he hath the gift of a coward to allay the gust he hath in quarreling. Tis thought among the prudent he would quickly have the gift of a grave. By this hands, they are scoundrels and subtractors that say so of him. Who are they? That they add, moreover, he's drunk nightly in your company. With drinking health to my niece, I'll drink to her as long as there is passage in my throat and drink in Illyria. He's a coward and a coistrel that will not drink to my niece till his brain turn to the toe like a parish top. What wench? Castellano Vulgo, for here comes Sir Andrew Aguiface. Enter Sir Andrew. Sir Toby Belch. How now, Sir Toby Belch? Sweet Sir Andrew. Bless you, fair shrew. And you too, sir. A cost, Sir Andrew, a cost. What's that? My niece's chambermaid. Good mistress, a cost. I desire better acquaintance. My name is Mary, sir. Oh, good mistress Mary, a cost. You mistake, knight. A cost is front her, board her, woo her, assail her. By my troth, I will not undertake her in this company. Is that the meaning of a cost? Very well, gentlemen. And thou let her part so, Sir Andrew, would thou mightst never let draw sword again. Any part so, mistress, I would I might never draw sword again. Fair lady, do you think you have fools in hand? Sir, I have you not by the hand. Mary, but you shall have, and here's my, my hand. He offers his hand. Now, sir, thought is free. I pray you, bring you your hand to the buttery bar and let it drink. Wherefore, sweetheart? What's it's your matter? Dry, Why, I think so. I'm not such an ass, but I can keep my hand dry. But what's your jest? A dry jest, sir. Are you full of them? Aye, sir. I have them at my fingers' ends. Mary, now I'll let you go by the hand. I am barren. Mariah exits. O oh, knight, thou lackest a cup of canary. When did I see so that put down? Never in your life, I think, unless you see canary put me down. Methinks sometimes I have no more wit than a Christian or an ordinary man has. But I am a great eater of beef, and I believe that does harm to my wit. No question. And I thought that I'd first swear it. I'll ride home tomorrow, Sir Toby. Pourquoi, my dear knight? What is pourquoi? Do or not do? How would I have bestowed that time the tongues that I had in fencing, dancing, and bear baiting? Oh, had I but followed the arts. Then thou hast had an excellent head of hair. Why? Would that have meant in my hair? Past question. For those seest it will not curl by nature. But it becomes me well enough, does it not? Excellent. It hangs like a flax on a distaff, and I hope to see a huswife take thee between her legs and spit it off. Faith, all home tomorrow, Sir Toby. Your niece will not be seen, or if she be, it's four to one she'll none of me. The Count himself here hard by woo, sir. She'll none of the Count. 
She'll not match above her degree, neither in estate, years, nor wit. I have heard her swear it. Tut, there's a life in it, man. I'll stay a month longer. I'm of all the strangest mind in the world. I delight in mass and revel sometimes altogether. Art thou good at kickwashes night? As any man in Illyria whatsoever he be, under the degree, the degree of my betters. And yet, I will not compare with an old man. What is thy excellence in a Gilead night? Faith, I can cut a caper. And I can cut the mutton to it. And I think I have the back trick simply as strong as any man in Illyria. Wherefore are these things hid? Wherefore have these gifts a curtain before him? Are they like to take dust? Uh, like Mistress Mull's picture? Why dost thou not go to church in a Gilead and come home in a Cortano? My very walk should be a jig. I would not so much uh, make as water as but a sink of pace. What dost thou mean? And uh, is it a world to hide virtues in? I did think, by the excellent constitution of thy leg, it was formed under the star of a Gilead. Aye, tis strong, and it doesn't differ well in a dun-colored stock. Shall we set about some revels? What shall we do else? We were not born on Taurus. Taurus? That's sides and heart. No, sir. It's, it is legs and thighs. Let me see the caper. <laughs> Higher! <laughs> Excellent! They exit. Enter Valentine and Viola and Man's entire scenario. If the duke continue these favors towards you, Cesario, you are like to be much advanced. He hath known you but three days, and already you are no stranger. You either fear his humor or my negligence, that you call in question the continuance of his love. Is he inconstant, sir, in his favors? No, believe me. I thank you. Enter Orsino and Curio. Here comes the count. Who saw Cesario, eh? On your attendance, lord. Here. Stand you a while aloof, Cesario, thou knowest no less but all. I have unclasped to thee the book even of my secret soul. Therefore, good youth, adjust thy gate unto her, be not denied access. Stand at her doors and tell them, there thy fixed foot shall grow till thou have audience. Sure, my noble lord, if she be so abandoned to her sorrow as it is spoke, she will never admit me. Be clamorous and leap all civil bounds rather than make unprofited return. Say, do speak with her, my lord. What then? Oh, then unfold the passion of my love. Surprise her with discourse of my dear faith. It shall become thee well to act my woes. She will attend it better in thy youth than in annuncios of more grave aspect. I think not so, my lord. Dear lad, believe it. For they shall yet belie thy happy years that say thou art a man. Diana's lip is not more smooth and rubious. Thy small pipe is as the maiden's organ, shrill and sound, and all assemblative a woman's part. I know thy constellation is right apt for this affair. Some four or five attend him, all, if you will, for I myself am best when least in company. Prosper well in this, and thou shalt live as freely as thy lord, to call his fortunes thine. Uh, I'll do my best to woo your lady. Yet a barful strife, whoever I woo myself would be his wife. They exit. Enter Mariah and Fessy the Fool. Hey, either tell me where thou hast been, or I will not open my lips so wide as a bristle may enter in a way of thy excuse. My lady will hang me for thy absence. Let her hang me, be that as well hanged in this world. It is not to fear colors. Make that good. He shall see none to fear. A good Latin answer. I can tell thee where that saying was born of I fear no colors. Where, good Mistress Mary? in the wars, and that may you be bold to say in your foolery. Well, God give them wisdom that have it, and those that are fools, let them use their talents. Yet you will be hanged for being so long absent, or to be turned away is not that as good as hanging to you? Many a good hanging prevents a bad marriage, and for turning away, let some are bear it out. You are resolute then. Not so, neither, but I am resolved on two points. That if one break, the other one will hold, or if both break, your gaskins fall. Apt, in good faith, very apt. Well, go thy way. If Sir Toby would leave drinking, thou wert as witty a piece of ease flesh as any in Illyria. Peace, you rogue. No more of that. Here comes my lady. Make your excuse wisely. You were best. 
she exits, enter Lady Olivia with Malvolio. Would it ain't be thy will, but put me into good fooling. Those witches that are that think they have thee do very oft prove fools. And I that am sure I lack thee may pass for a wise man. But what says Chronopolis? Better a witty fool than a foolish wit. God bless thee, lady. Take the fool away. Do you not hear, fellows? Take the lady away. Go to. You're a dry fool. I'll know more of you. Besides, you grow dishonest. Two faults, Madonna, that drink and good counsel will mend. For give the dry fool drink, then is the fool not dry. Did the dishonest man mend himself? If he mend, he's, he is no longer dishonest. If he cannot, let the botcher mend him. Anything that's mended is but patched. Virtue that transgresses is but patched with sin. And sin that amends is but patched with virtue. If this simple syllogism will serve so, if it will not, what remedy? As there is no true cuckle but calamity, so beauty's a flower. The lady be bad, take away the fool. Therefore I say, take, again, take her away. Sir, I bad them take away you. Miss Prison in the highest degree. Lady, calculus non facit monicum. That's as much to say as I were not motley in my brain. Good Madonna, give me leave to prove you a fool. Can you do it? Dexterously, good Madonna. Make your proof. I must catechize you for it, Madonna. Good my mouse of virtue, answer me. Well, sir, for your want of other idleness, I'll bide your proof. Good Madonna. Why mournest thou? Good fool, for my brother's death. I think his soul is in hell, Madonna. I know his soul is in heaven, fool. The more fool, Madonna, to mourn for your brother's soul being in heaven. Take away the fool, gentlemen. What think you of this fool, Malvolio? Does he not mend? Yes, and shall do till the pangs of death shake him. Infirmity that decays the wise doth ever make the better fool. God send you, sir, speedy infirmity for the better increasing of increasing your folly. Sir Toby will be sworn that I am no fox, but he will not pass his word for two pence that you are no fool. How say you to that, Malvolio? I marvel your ladyship takes delight in such a barren rascal. I saw him put down the other day with an ordinary fool that has no more brain than a stone. Look you now, he's out of his guard already. Unless you laugh and minister occasion to him, he's gagged. I protest, take these wise men that crow so at these set kind of fools, no better than the fool's zanies. Oh, you are sick of self-love, Malvolia, and taste of a distempered appetite. To be generous, guiltless, and afraid of his position, is to take those things of bird bolts that you deem can bullets. There is no slander in a loud fool, though he do nothing but rail, nor no railing in a known discreet man, though he do nothing but reprove. Now Mercury and thee with leasing, for thou speakest well of fools. Enter Mariah. Madam, there is at the gate a young gentleman much desires to speak with you. Ugh, from the Count Orsino, is it? I know not, madam. Tis a fair young man and well attended. Who my people hold him delay? Sir Toby, madam, your kinsman? Fetch him off, I pray you. He speaks nothing but madman. Fie on him. Mariah exits. Go you, Malvolio. If it be a suit from the count, I am sick. Or not at home. What you will to dismiss it. Malvolio exits. Now you see, sir, how your fooling grows old and people dislike it. Thou hast spoke for us, Madonna, as if thy eldest son should be a fool, whose skull Jove cram with brains. For here he comes, one of thy kin, as a most weak pia mater. Enter Sir Toby. By my honor, half drunk, was he at the gate, cousin? A gentleman. A gentleman? What gentleman? Tis a gentleman here. O oh, plague all these pickled herring. How now, saw? Good, Sir Toby. Cousin, cousin, how have you come by so early this lethargy? Lechery? I defy lechery. There's one at the gate. 
I marry, what is he? Let him be the devil and he will. I care not. Give me faith, say I. Well, it's all one. He exits. What's a drunken man like fool? Like a drowned man, a fool, and a madman. One draw above heat makes him a fool. The second mads him, and the third drowns him. Go thou and seek the crowner, and let him sit, O my cuz, for he's in the third degree of drink. He's drowned. Go look after him. He is but mad yet, Madonna, and the fool shall look to the madman. He exits, enter Malvolio. Madam, yon young fellow swears he will speak with you. I told him you were sick. He takes it on him to understand so much and therefore comes to speak with you. I told him you were asleep. He seems to have a foreknowledge of that too and therefore comes to speak with you. What is to be said to him, lady? He's fortified against any denial. Tell him he shall not speak with me. Has been told so. And he says he'll stand at your door like a sheriff's post and be the supporter to a bench but he'll speak with you. What kind of man is he? Why, of mankind. What manner of man? A very ill manner. He'll speak with you, will you or no? What, of what personage is he? Not yet old enough to be a man, nor young enough for a boy, as a squash is, tis, as, uh, tis before it's a peace cord or a coddling when tis almost an apple. Tis with him in the standing water between boy and man. He is very well favored and he speaks very shrewishly. One would think his mother's milk was still scarce out of him. <laughs> Let him approach. Call him my gentlewoman. Gentlewoman, my lady calls. He exits, enter Mariah. Give me my veil. Come, throw it over my face. Well, once more, here Orsino's ambassador. Enter Viola. The honorable lady of the house, which is she? Speak to me. I shall answer for her. You will. Most radiant, exquisite, and unmatchable beauty, I pray you, tell me if this be the lady of the house, for I never saw her. I would be loath to cast away my speech, for besides that is excellently well penned, I have taken great pains to con it. Good beauties, let me sustain no scorn. I am very comfortable even to the least sinister usage. Whence came you, sir? I can say a little more than I have studied, and that question's out of my part. Good gentle one. Give me modest assurance, if you be the lady of the house, that I may proceed in my speech. Are you a comedian? No, my profound heart, and yet by the very things and malice, I swear I am not that I play. Are you the lady of the house? If I do not observe myself, I am. Most certain, if you are she, you do usurp yourself, for what is yours to bestow is not yours to reserve. But this is my commission. I will honor my speech in your praise and then show you the heart of my message. Come to what is important in it. I forgive you the praise. Alas, I took great pains to study it and tis poetical. It is the more like to be feigned. I pray you keep in it. I heard you were saucy at my gates and allowed your approach rather than wonder at you than to hear you. If you be not mad, be gone. If you have reason, be brief. Tis not time of mood with me to make in one so skipping a dialogue. Will you host sail, sir? Here lies your way. No, good swabber. I'm here to hold a little longer. Some mollification for your giant sweet lady. Tell me your mind. I'm a messenger. Sure, you have some hideous matter to deliver when the courtesy of it is so fearful. Speak your office. It alone concerns your ear. I bring no overture of war, no taxation of homage. I hold the olive in my hand. My words are as full of peace as matter. Yet you begin rudely. What are you? What would you? The rudeness that hath appeared in me have I learned from my entertainment. What I am and what I would are as secret as maidenhead. To your ears divinity, to any other's profanation. Give us a place alone. We shall hear his divinity. Mariah exits. 
Now, sir, what is your text? Most sweet lady. A comfortable doctrine, and much may be said of it. Where lies your text? In Orsino's bosom. In his bosom? In what chapter of his bosom? To answer by the method in the first of his heart. Um, I have read it. It's heresy. Have you no more to say? Good madam, let me see your face. <sighs> have you any commission from your lord to negotiate my face? You are now out of your text. But we shall draw the curtain and show you the picture. <laughs> Look you, sir, such a one I was this present. Is it not well done? Excellently done, if God did all. Tis in green, sir, to all endure wind and weather. Tis beauty truly blunt, whose red and white nature's own sweet and cunning hand laid on. Lady, you are the cruelest she alive, if you will lead these graces to the grave and leave the world no copy. Oh, sir, I will not be so hard-hearted. I will give out divers schedules of my beauty. It shall be inventoried in every particle and utensil label to my will. As item, two lips indifferent, red item, two brown eyes with lids to them, item, one neck, one chin, and so forth. Were you sent hither to praise me? I see you are what you are. You are too proud. But if you were the devil, you were fair. My lord and master <laughs> loves you. Oh, such love could be but recompense, though you were crowned the non-apparel of beauty. How does he love me? With adorations, fertile tears, with groans that thunder love, with sighs of fire. Your Lord does know my mind. I cannot love him. Yet I suppose him virtuous, know him noble, of great estate, a fresh and stainless youth, and voices well diverged, free, learned, and valiant, and in dimension in the shape of nature, a gracious person. But yet I cannot love him. He might have took his answer long ago. If you, I did love you and my master's flame with such a suffering, such a deadly fire and your denial, I would find no sense. I would not understand it. Why, what would you? Make me a willow at your gate uh, and call upon my soul within the house. Write loyal cantons of contempt and love and sing them loud even in the dead of night. Hallow your name to the reverberate hills and make the babbling gossip of the air cry out, Olivia. Oh, you should not rest between the elements of air and earth, but you should pity me. You might do much. Where is your parentage? Above my fortunes, yet my state as well. I am a gentleman. Uh, get you to your Lord. I cannot love him. Let him send no more. Unless, perchance, you come to me again uh, to tell me how he takes it. Fare you well. I thank you for your pains. Spend this for me. Uh, no, I'm the. F oh. I'm no feed post, lady. Keep your purse. My master, not myself, lacks recompense. Love makes his heart a flint that you shall love. And let your fervor, like my master's, be placed in contempt. Farewell, fair cruelty. She exits. What is your parentage? Above my fortunes, yet my state as well. I am a gentlewoman. I'll be sworn that art, thy tongue, thy face, thy limbs, actions, and spirit do give thee thy bold blazon. Not too fast. Soft, soft. Unless the master were the man, how now? Even so quickly may one catch the plague? <sighs> Oh, dear, me thinks I feel this use perfections with an invisible and subtle cell to keep in at mine eyes. <sighs> well, let it be. What ho, Malvolio? Enter Malvolio. Here, madam, at your service. Mm, run after that same peevish messenger that counties met. He left this ring behind him, would I or not. Tell him all none of it. He hands him a ring. Desire him not to flatter with his lord, nor hold him up with hopes. I'm not for him. If that youth will come this way tomorrow, I'll give him reasons for it. I thee, Malvolio. Madam, I will. He asks I do not. I do not know what, in fear to find, my eyes too great a flatterer for my mind. Fate, show thy force, ourselves we do not owe. 
what is decreed must be and be the so. The exit. Enter Antonia and Sebastian. Will you stay no longer, nor will you not that I go with you? By your patience, no. My star shone darkly over me. The malignancy of my fate might perhaps distemper yours. Therefore, I shall crave of you your leave that I may bear my evils alone. It were a bad recompense for your love to lay any of them on you. Let me yet know of you whither you are bound. No sooth, ma'am. My determinate voyage is mere extravagancy, but I perceive in you so excellent a touch of modesty that you will not extort from me what I'm willing to keep in. Therefore, it charges me in manners the rather to express myself. You must know of me then, An Antonia. My name is Sebastian, which I call Rodrigo. My father was that Sebastian of Messaline, whom I know you have heard of. He left behind him myself, a sister, both born in an hour, if the heavens had been so pleased, would have been so ended. But you, sir, altered for some hours before you took me from the breach of the sea, my sister was drowned. Alas, the day. A lady, ma'am, though it was said she much resembled me, was yet of many accounted beautiful. But though I could not with such as estimable wonder over far believe that, yet thus far I will boldly publish her. She bore in mind that envy could not but call fair. She is drowned already with salt water, though I seem to drown her remembrance again with more. Pardon me, sir, your bad entertainment. Oh, good, Antonia, forgive me your trouble. If you will not murder me for my love, let me be your servant. If you will not undo what you have done, that is, kill him whom you have recovered desire is not. Fare you well at once. My bosom is full of kindness, and I am yet so near the manners of my mother, that upon the last occasion more, mine eyes will tell tales of me. I am bound to court, Count Orsino's court. Farewell. He exits. The gentleness of all the gods go with thee. I have many enemies in Orsino's court, else would I very shortly see thee there. But come what may, I do adore thee so, that danger see shall seem sport, and I will go. He exits. Enter Viola, uh, Malvolia at several doors. Were you not now with the Countess Olivia? Even now, sir, on a moderate pace, I have since arrived but hither. She returns this ring to you, sir. You might have saved me my pains to have taken it away yourself. She adds, moreover, that you should put your lord into a desperate assurance. She will none of him. And one more thing. That you be never so hardy to come again in his affairs, unless it be to report your lord's taking of this. Receive it so. She took the ring of me, all none of it. Come, sir, you peevishly threw it to her, and her will is it should be returned. He throws down the ring. <laughs> if it be worth stooping for, there it lies in your eye. If not, be it his who finds it. He acts it. I left no ring with her. What means this lady? He picks up Fortune the ring. Forbid, oh, Fortune forbid my outside have not charmed her. She may get view of me, indeed so much that methought her eyes had lost her tongue, for she did speak and starts distractedly. She loves me, sure. The cunning of her passion invites me in this churlish messenger. None of my lord's ring. Why, he sent her none. I am the man. If it so be as tis, poor lady, she were better love a dream. Disguise, I see thou art a wickedness, wherein the pregnant enemy does much. How easy is it for the proper false and woman's waxen hearts to set their forms. Alas, O oh, frailty is the cause, not we, for such as we are made of, if such we be. How will this badge? My master loves her as dearly, and I, poor monster, fond as much on him, and she, mistaken, seems to dote on me. What will become of this? As I am man, my state is desperate for my master's love. As I am woman, now alas the day, what thriftless sighs shall poor Olivia breathe? O oh, time, thou must entangle this, not I. It is too hard a knot for me to untie. She exits. Enter Sir Toby and Sir Andrew. Approach, Sir Andrew, not to be at bed after midnight, is to be up, bed up sometimes. And Dulictio Sergei, thou knowest. 
Nay, by my troth, I know not. What I know, to be up late is to be up late. A false conclusion. I hate it as an unfilled can. To be up after midnight and to go to bed then is early. So that to go to bed after midnight is to go to bed at bedtime. Does not our lives consist of the four elements? Faith, so they say. But I think it rather consists of eating and drinking. Thou art a scholar. Let us therefore eat and drink. Marion, I say a stoop of wine. Enter Festy the fool. Here comes the fool of faith. How now, my hearts? Did you never see the picture of we three? Welcome, ass. Now let's have a catch. By my troth, the fool is an excellent breast. I'd rather than 40 shillings I'd such a leg, and so sweet of breath to sing as the fool has. And sooth, thou wast in very gracious fooling last night, when thou spokest a pig regrowness of the Vapians passing the equinoctial of Quabus. Twas very good of faith. I sent thee sixpence for thy layman. Hadst it? I did in pitiful side gradually, for now Volio's nose is no whipsock, my lady has a white hand, and the myrmidons are no bodily old houses. Excellent. Why, this is the best fooling when all is done. Now, a song. Giving money to the fool. Come on, there is sixpence for you. Let's have a song. Giving money to the fool. There's a test rule in me too. If one night give a... Would you have a love song or a song of good life? Ooh, a love song, a love song. Aye, aye, I care not for good life. Excellent, good of faith. Oh, good. Mellifluous voice, as I am true knight. A contagious breath. Very sweet and contagious of faith. To hear by the nose, it is a delicate in contagion. But shall we make the welkin dance indeed? Shall we rouse the night owl in a catch that will draw three souls out of one weaver? Shall we do that? And you love me. Let's do it. I am dog at a catch. By our leg, sir, some dogs will catch well. Most certain, let her catch be, thou knave. Hold thy peace, thou knave. Knight, I shall be constrained and call thee knave, knight. Tis not the first time I've constrained one to call me knave. Begin, fool, it begins. Hold thy peace. I shall never begin if I hold my peace. Good faith, come, begin. Enter Mariah. What a caterwauling do you keep here? If my lady have not called up her steward Marvolio and bid him turn you out of doors, never trust me. My lady's a Cassian, we are politicians. Malvoy is a Pega Ramsey, and three merry men be we. Am I not consanguineous? Am I not of her blood? Till Valley, lady, there dwelt a man in Babylon, lady, lady. Beshrew me, the knight's an admirable fooling. Aye, he does well enough if he be disposed, and so do I too. He does it with the better grace, but I do it more natural. Oh, the twelfth night of December. For the love of God, peace. Enter Malvolio.
My masters, are you mad? Or what are you? Have you no wit, manners, nor honesty, but to gabble like tinkers at this time of night? I'm so tired. Do you make an alehouse of a lady's house that you squeak at your coziest catchers without any mitigation of remorse of voice? Is there no respect of place, persons, nor time in you? We did keep time, sir, in our catches. Sneck up. <sighs> Sir Toby, I must be round <laughs> with you. <laughs> My lady bade me to tell you that, though she harbors you as her kinsman, she's nothing allied to your disorders. If you can separate yourself and your misdemeanors, you are welcome in the house. If not, and it would please you well to take leave of her. She's very Farewell, weird. dear heart, since I must need be gone. Nay, good Sir Toby. His Why eyes do show his days. His days are almost done. Is it even so? But I will never die. Sir Toby, there you lie. Shall I bid him go? What an F if you do. Shall I bid him go and spare not? Oh, no, 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 spare not. Out of tune, sir, you lie. Art any more than a steward? Uh, dost thou think because thou art uh, virtuous, there shall be no cakes and ale? Yes, by St. Anne, and ginger shall be hot I now too. Thou art right. Go, sir, rub your chain with crumbs. A stoop of wine, Maria. Mistress Mary, if you prized milady's favor at anything more than contempt, you would not give means for this, this uncivil rule. She shall know of it by this hand. He exits. Don't shake your ears. Twere as good a deed as to drink when a man's a hungry, to challenge him the field and then to break promise with him and make a fool of him. Do it, knight. I'll write thee a challenge, or I'll deliver thy indignation to him by word of mouth. Sweet Sir Toby, be patient for tonight. Since the youth of the counts was today with my lady, she is much out of the quiet. For Monsieur Malvolio, let me alone with him. If I do not go him into a nay word and make him a common recreation, do not think I have been wit enough to lie straight in my bed. I know I can do it. Ooh, possess us, possess us. Tell us something of him. Mary, sir, sometimes he is in a kind of Puritan. Oh, if I thought that, I'd become like a dog. What? For being a Puritan? Thy exquisite reason, dear knight? I have no exquisite reason for it, but I have reason good enough. The devil, a Puritan that he is, or anything co constantly but a time pleaser, an affectioned ass that con state without books and utters it by great swaths, the best persuaded of himself, so crammed as he thinks with excellencies, that it is his grounds of faith that all that look on him of love him. And on that vice in him, will my revenge find notable cause to work? Ooh, what will thou do? I will drop in his way some obscure epistles of, lo of love, wherein by the color of his beard, the shape of his leg, the manner of his gait, the expression of his eye, forehead, and complexion, he shall find himself most feelingly personated. I can write verily like my lady, your niece, on a forgotten manner. We can hardly make distinction of our hands. Excellent. I smell a device. I have it in my nose too. He shall think by the letters that thou will drop that they will come from my niece and that she's in love with him. My purpose is indeed a horse of that color. And your horse now would make him an ass. Ass? I doubt not. Oh, it will be admirable. Sport royal, I warrant you. I know my physics, physique will work with him. I will plant you two. And let the fool make a third, where he shall find the letter, observe his construction of it. For this night to bed and dream on the event. Farewell. Oh, good night, Penthesilla. The exit. Before me, 
She's a good wench. Oh, she's a beagle, true bred, one that adores me. What of that? I was adored once too. Uh, less the bed night. That was needed to send for more money. If I cannot if I cannot recover your niece, I'm a foul way out. Oh, send for more money, Knight. If thou hast or not, in the end, call me cut. If I do not, never trust me. Take it how you will. Come, come. I'll go burn some sack. Tis too late to go to bed now. Come, Knight. Come, Knight. They exit. Enter Orsino, Viola, and Kyrio. Give me some music. Now, good morrow, friends. Now, good Cesario, but that piece of song, that old and antique song we heard last night. We thought it did relive my passion much, more than light airs and recollected terms of these most brisk and giddy paced times. Come but one verse. He is not here, so please, your lordship, that should sing it. Who was it? Feste the jester, my lord, a fool that the Lady Olivia's father took much delight in. He is about the house. Seek him out. Here you exit. And play the tune the while. Music plays. Come hither, boy. If ever thou shalt love, in the sweet pangs of it remember me, for such as I am, all true lovers are, unstayed and skittish in all motions else, save in the constant image of the creature that is beloved. How dost thou like this tune? It gives a very echo to the seat where love is throned. Thou dost speak masterly. My life upon it, young though thou art, thine eye hath stayed upon some favor that it loves. Hath it not, boy? A little, by your favor. What kind of woman is it? Of your complexion. She is not worth thee, then. What years in faith? About your years, my lord. Too old, by heaven. Let still the woman take an elder than herself. So wears she to, to him. So sways she level in her husband's heart. For, boy, however we do praise ourselves, our fancies are more giddy and unfirm, more longing, wavering, sooner lost and worn than women's are. I think it well, my lord. Then let thy love be younger than thyself, or thy affections cannot hold the bent. For women are as roses, whose fair flower being once displayed doth fall that very hour. And so they are, alas, that they are so, to die even when they to perfection grow. Enter Curio and Fessy the Fool. Oh, fellow, come, the song we had last night. Mark it, Cesario. It is old and plain. The spinsters and the knitters in the sun and the free maids that weave their thread with bones do use to chant it. It is silly sooth and dallies with the innocence of love like the old age. Are you ready, sir? Hey, prithee, sing.
giving money. There's for thy, there for thy, there's for thy pains. No pain, sir. I take pleasure, pleasure in singing, sir. I'll pay thy pleasure then. Truly, sir, and pleasure will be paid one time or another. Give me now leave to leave thee. Now the melancholy God protect thee, and the tailor make thy doublet of changeable taffeta, for thy mind is a very opal. I would have men of such constancy put to sea, that their business might be everything and their intent everywhere, for that it that always makes a good voyage and nothing. Farewell. He exits. Let all the rest give place. All but Orsino and Viola exit. Once more, Cesario, get thee to yawn some sovereign cruelty. Tell her my love, more noble than the world, prizes not quantity of dirty lands. The part that fortunes hath bestowed upon her, tell her I hold as giddy as fortune. But tis that miracle and queen of gems that nature pranks her and attracts my soul. But if she cannot love you, sir. I cannot be so answered. Soothe, but you must. Say that some lady, as perhaps there is, hath for your love as great a pang of heart as you have for Olivia. You cannot love her, you tell her so. Must she not then be answered? There is no woman's sides can bide the beating of so strong a passion as love doth give my heart. No woman's heart so big to hold so much. They lack retention. Alas, their love may be called appetite. No motion of the liver but the palate that suffers surfeit, cloyment, and revolts, but mine is all as hungry as the sea and can digest as much. Make no compare between that love a woman can bear me and that I owe Olivia. Aye, but I know. What dost thou know? Too well what love woman to men may owe. In faith, they're as true of heart as we. My father had a daughter loved a man, as it might be, perhaps, were I a woman, I should your lordship. And what's her history? A blank, my lord. She never told her love, but let concealment, like a worm in the bud, feet on her damask cheek. She pined and thought, and with a green and yellow melancholy, she sat like patience on a monument, smiling at grief. Was this not love indeed? What we men may say more, swear more, but indeed our shows are more than will, for still we prove much in our vows, but little in our love. But die thy sister of her love, my boy? I am all the daughters of my father's house, and all the brothers too, and yet I know not. Sir, shall I to this lady? Ay, that's the theme. To her in haste, give her this jewel. Say my love can give no place, bide no deny. He hands her a jewel and they exit. Enter Sir Toby, Sir Andrew, and Fabian. On thy way, Senor Fabian. Nay, I'll come. If I lose a scruple of this sport, let me be boiled to death with melancholy. Wouldst thou not be glad to have a niggardly rascal sheep adder come by some noble shame? I would, exalt man. You know he brought me out of favor with my lady about a bear baiting here. To anger him, we'll have the bear bait again. Uh, and we will fool him black and bull, blue, shall we not, Sir Andrew? And we do not, it is pity of our lives. Oh, here comes little villain. How now, my medal of India? Get you all to the box tree. Malvolio is coming down this walk. He has been yonder in the sun practicing behavior to his own shadow in the half hour. Observe him for the love of mockery. For I know this letter will make a con contemplative idiot of him. Oh, in the name of jesting. Say hide. Lie thou there. Putting down the letter. So here comes the trot that must get with caught with tickling. He exits. Enter Malvolio. Tis much fortune, all is fortune. Mariah, one said she did affect me. And I've heard her herself come thus near. That she, that should she fancy, it should be one of my complexion. Besides, she uses me with a more um, exalted respect than anyone else that follows her. What should I think on it? Oh, he's an overweening rogue. 
Oh, peace. Contemplation makes a rare Tarkaki of him. How he jests under his advanced plumes. Slayer could so beat the rogue. Peace, I say. To be Count Malvolio, which I simply delight. Ah, uh, rogue. Pistolin, pistolin. There is example for it. The lady of Strachi married a Yemen of the wardrobe. Fire on him, Jezebel. Oh, peace, now he's deeply in. Look how imagination blows him. <sighs> Having been three months married to her, sitting in my state. Calling my officers about me, in my branched velvet gown, coming from a day bed where I have left Olivia sleeping. <laughs> Olivia. <laughs> oh, peace, peace. And then to have the humor of state. And after a demure travel of regard, telling them I know my place as they should theirs, to ask of my kinsman, Toby. <laughs> Bolts and shackles. Oh, peace, 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 now, now. Seven of my people, with an obedient start, make out for him. I frown the while. And perchance wind up my watch and oh, play with some, uh, some, some ritual. Toby approaches, curtsies to me. <laughs> Shall this fellow live? Though our silence be drawn from us with cars, yet peace. I extend my hand to him thus. Quenching my familiar smile with an austere regard of control. <laughs> and does not Toby take you a blow on the lips then? Saying, Cousin Toby, my fortunes, having cast me upon your niece, give me this prerogative of speech. What? What? <clears throat> You must amend your drunkenness. <laughs> Out, scab. Nay, patience, or we break the sinews of our plot. Besides, you waste the treasure of your time with a foolish knight. That's me, I warn you. One, Sir Andrew. I knew it was I, for many do call me fool. Seeing the letter. What employment have we here? Now is the woodcock near the gin. Oh, peace and the spirits of humors animate reading aloud to him. I, 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 this is Milady's hand. These be her very C's, her U's, and her T's. And thus she makes her great P's. <laughs> It is in contempt of question her hand. Her C's? Her U's and her T's? Yes, Why yes. that? Her U's and her T's is what it says. To the unknown beloved, this and my good wishes. Oh. By your leaves wax soft. Look in the impression. Her Lucretia with which she uses to seal. Tis milady. To whom should this be? This one's him, Livernal. <clears throat> Jove knows our love, but who? Lips do not move, no man must know. No man must know. What follows? The number's altered, no man must know. If this should be thee, Malvolio. <laughs> oh, it was me, it was me. Oh, I must continue my reading. I may command where I adore, but silence like a Lucretia knife, with bloodless stroke my heart doth gore. M O A I doth sway my life. A fustian riddle. Hmm. 
M-O-A-I dot sway me lie. Nay, but first, let me see, let me see, let me see. What dish of poison has she dressed him? And with what wing the staniel cheek set at it? May I command where I adore? Why, she may command me. I serve her. She is my lady. Why, this is evident in any formal capacity. There is no obstruction in this. And the end, what should make that alphabetical position portend? If I could make that resemble something in me softly, M O A I. Hmm. Oh, I make up that he is now at a cold scent. Sodder will cry upon it for all this, though it be rank as a fox. M O A I. M. Mm -hmm. And why that begins me name? Oh. Did not I say he would work it out? The cur is excellent at faults. M. But then hmm, there was no consonancy in the sequel that suffers under probation. A should follow, but O does. And O shall end, I hope. Ro. Oh, I'll crudgily and make him cry. Oh. 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 And then I comes behind. I and you had an eye behind you. You might see more detraction at your heels than fortunes before you. M O A I. This stimulation is not as the former, and yet um, to crush this a little, it would bow to me for every one of these letters are in my name. Oh. Soft, give all those pros. If this fall into thy hand, revolve. In my stars, I am above thee. But be not afraid of greatness. Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. <laughs> thy fates open their hands, let thy blood and spirit embrace them, and to inure thyself to what thou art to be, cast thy humble slough and appear fresh. Be opposite with the kinsmen, surly with servants, let thy tongue tang with the arguments of state. Put thyself into the trick of singularity. She thus advises thee that sides for thee. Remember who commended thy yellow stocking. <gasps> My yellow stocking. And wish to see thee ever cross guarded. <laughs> I say, remember, go to thou art made. So thou art mad, if thou desirest to be so. If not, let me see thee a steward still. The fellow of servants are not worthy to touch fortune's fingers. <laughs> Farewell. She that would alter services with thee. The unfortunate unhappy. Daylight and champion discovers not more. This is, this is open. I will be proud. I will read politic offers. Yes, I will baffle Sir Terry. I will wash off gross acquaintance. I will be pontifice the very man. I do not now fool myself to let imagination jade me. For every reason excites to this, that my lady loves me. <laughs> she did commend my yellow stockings of late. She did praise my leg, being cross guarded And in this, she manifests herself to, to my love. And with a kind of injunction, drives me to these habits of her liking. I thank my stars. I am happy. Oh. I will be strange, stout, in yellow stockings <laughs> and cross guarded, even with the swiftness of putting on. Jove in my stars be praised. <gasps> Here is your transcript. Thou canst not choose but know who I am. <gasps> if thou entertainest my love, let it appear in thy smiling. <gasps> my smiles become thee well. Therefore, in my presence, still smile. Dear me, sweet, I prithee.
Joe, I thank thee. I will smile. I will smile. <laughs> I will do everything that thou wilt of me. He accepts. I will not give my part of the sport for a pension of thousands to be paid from the Sophie. I could marry this wench for this device. So could I too. Uh, and ask no other diary, dowry with her just but no, another set, Jess. Nor I neither. <laughs> Enter Mariah. Here comes my noble go catcher. Will thou set thy foot on my neck? Or am I neither? Shall I play my freedom at a day, at a cherry trip and become thy bond slave? A faith. Or I either? Why thou hast put in, in such a dream that when the image of it leaves him, he must run mad. Nay, but say true. Does it work upon him? Oh, like aqua vita with a midwife. If you will see, if you will then see the fruits of the sport, mark his first approach before my lady. He will come to her in yellow stockings, and tis a color she abhors, and cross garter, a fashion she detests. So unsuitable, and he will smile upon her, which will now be so unsuitable to her disposition, being addicted to melancholy as she is, that I cannot be, but turn him into a notable contempt. If you will see it, follow me. To the gates of Tartar, thou most excellent devil of wit. I'll make one too. They exit. Enter Viola and Fessy the Fool playing the table. Save thee, friend, and thy music. Dost thou live by thy tabor? No, sir. I live by the church. Art thou a churchman? No such matter, sir. I do live by the church, for I do live in my house. My house doth stand by the church. So thou mayst say the king lies by a beggar if a beggar dwell near him, or the church stands by the tabor if the tabor stand by the church. You have said, sir, to see this age, sentence is but a sharper glove to a good wit. How quickly the wrong side may be turned outward. Nay, that's certain. Uh... They that dally nicely with words may quickly make them wanton. I would, therefore, my sister had no name, sir. Why, man? Why, sir, her name is a word, and to dally with that word might make my sister wanton. But indeed, words are very rascals, since bonds disgrace them. Thy reason, man? Troth, sir, I can yield you none without words, and words are grown so false I am loath to prove reason with them. I warrant thou art a merry fellow and cares for nothing. No, not so, sir. I do care for something, but in my conscience, sir, I do not care for you. If that be to care for nothing, sir, it would it make you invisible. Are not that the Lady Olivia is fool? No, indeed, sir. The Lady Olivia has no folly. She will keep no fool, sir, till she be married. And fools are as husbands as pilchers are to herring. The husband's the bigger. I am indeed not her fool, but her corrupter of words. I saw thee late at the Catarocinos. Foolery, sir, does walk around, walk about the orb like the sun. It shines everywhere. I would be sorry, sir, but the fool should be as oft with your master as with my mistress. I think I saw your wisdom there. Nay, and that pass upon me. I'll no more with thee. Hold, there are expenses for thee. Giving a coin. No, Jove in this ne next commodity of hair, send thee a beard. By my troth, I'll tell thee I'm all sick for one, though I would not have it grow my chin. Is thy lady within? Would not a pair of these have bread, sir? Yes, being put together and put to use. I would play Lord Pandarus of Fergia, sir to bring a Cressida to this Troilus. I understand you, sir. Tis well begged. Giving another Matter, coin. I hope is not great, sir. Begging but a beggar. Cressida was a beggar. My lady is within, sir. I will constitute them once you come. Who you are and what you would are, are 
out of my welcome. I might say element, but the word's overworn. He access. This fellow is wise enough to play the fool, and to do that well craves the kind of wit. He must observe their mood on whom he jests, the quality of persons, and the time. And, like the haggard, check out every feather that comes before his eye. This is a practice as full of labor as a wise man's art. For folly that he wisely shows is fit, but wise men, folly fallen, quite taint their wit. Enter Sir Toby and Andrew. <laughs> Save you, gentlemen. And you, sir. De vous garder, monsieur. Et vous aussi, votre serviteur. I hope, sir, you are, and I'm yours. Will you encounter the house? My niece desires you should enter, if your trade be to her. I am bound to your niece, sir. I mean, she is the list of my voyage. Taste your legs, sir. Put them into motion. My legs do better understand me, sir, than I understand what you mean by bidding me taste my legs. I mean to go, sir, to enter. I will enter with gate and entrance, but we are prevented. Enter Olivia and Mariah, her gentlewoman. Most excellent, accomplished lady, the heavens rain odors on you. That you, the rare courtier, rain and odors well. My matter hath no voice, lady, but to your own most pregnant and vouchsafed ear. Odors? Pregnant and vouchsafed? I'll get them all three already. Let the garden door be shut and leave me to my hearing. Sir Toby, Sir Andrew, and Mariah exit. Give me your hand, sir. Uh, my duty, madam, and most humble service. What is your name? Uh, Cesario is your servant's name, fair princess. <laughs> my servant, sir, who has never married world, since lowly feigning was called compliment, your servant to court count or seen as you. And he is yours, and must needs be yours. And servant, your servant's servant is your servant, madam. <laughs> for him, I think not him. For his thoughts were they were blanks rather than filled with me. Madam, I come to what your gentle thoughts on his behalf. Oh, by your leave, I pray you. I bade you never speak of him again. But would you undertake another suit? I had rather hear you to solicit that the music from the spheres. Dear lady... Give me leave, beseech you, I did send, after the last enchantment you did hear. A ring in chase of you, so did I abuse myself, my servant, and I. Fear me, you, under your hard construction I must sit, to force that on you in a shameful cunning, which you knew none of yours. What might you think? Have you not have set honor at the stake, and bade it with thy muzzled thoughts, thy trained heart can think? To one of your receiving, enough is shown. A suppressed, not a bosom, hides my heart. So let me hear you speak. I pity you. That's a degree to love. No, not a grise, for tis a vulgar proof that very often pity enemies. Why, methinks it's time to smile again. Oh, world, how apt the poor are to be proud. If I should be a prey, how much the better to fall before the lion than the wolf. Clock strikes. The clock upbraids me with the waste of time. Be not afraid, good youth. I will not have you. And yet, when wit and youth is come to harvest, your wife is like to reap a proper man. There lies your way due west. Then westward ho. A grace and good disposition attend your ladyship. You'll nothing, madam, to my lord by me? Stay, I prithee, tell me what thou thinks of me. That you do think you are not what you are. If I think so, I think the same of you. Then think you right, I am not what I am. <laughs> I would you were as I would have you be. Would it be better, madam, than I am? I wish it might, for now I am your fool. Oh, what a deal of scorn looks beautiful. And the contempt of anger of his lip, a murderer's guilt shows not itself more soon than love that would seem hid. Love's night is noon. Cesario, by the roses of the spring, by maidhood, honor, truth, and everything, I love thee so. 
that mulgar, all that pride, nor wit, nor reason, can my passion hide. Do not extort thy reasons from this clause. For that I will, though therefore hast no cause, but rather reason thus, with reason feather, love sought is good, but given unsought is better. By innocence I swear, and by my youth, I have one heart, one bosom, and one truth, that no woman has, nor never none shall mistress be of it, save I alone. And so adieu, good madam, never more will I my master's tears to you deplore. Yet come again, for thou perhaps mayest move that heart which now pours to like his love. They exit in different directions. Enter Sir Toby, Sir Andrew, and Fabian. No, Faith, I'll not stay a jot longer. Thy reason, dear Venom, give thy reason. You must needs yield your reason, Sir Andrew. Mary, I saw your niece do more favors to the Count's serving man than she ever bestowed upon me. I saw it in the orchard. Did she see thee the while, old boy? Tell me that. As plain as I see you now. This was a great argument of love in her toward you. Sly, will you make an ass of me? I will prove it legitimate, sir, upon the oaths of judgment and reason. And they have a grand juryman since before Noah was a sailor. She did show favor to the youth in your sight, only to exasperate you, to awake your dumbest valor, to put to fire in your heart and brimstone in your liver. You should then have accosted her, and with some excellent jest, fire new from the mint. You should have banged the youth into dumbness. This was looked for at your hand, and this was bulk. The double guilt of this opportunity you let time wash off, and you are now sailed into the north of my lady's opinion, where you will hang like an icicle on a Dutchman's beard, unless you do redeem it by some laudable attempt, either of valor or policy. And it be anyway, it must be with valor, for policy I hate. I'd as lief be a brownist as a politician. Why then, build me thy fortunes upon the basis of valor, Challenge me to the court's youth to fight with him. Heard him in 11 places. My niece shall take note of it. And I assure myself there is no love broker in the world uh, can more prevail in a man's condemnation with a woman than report of valor. There is no way but this, Sir Andrew. Will either of you bear me a challenge to him? Go, write in a martial hand. Be cursed and brief. It is no matter how witty, so it be eloquent, full of innovation. Taunt him with the license of ink. If thou thouest him some thrice, it shall not be amiss. And as many lies as will, as will lie in the sheet of paper, although the sheet were big enough for the bed of wear in England, set him down, go about it. Let there be a gall enough in ink. Uh, thou, thou, thou write him in a goose pen, no matter. About it. Where shall I find you? Uh, we'll call thee at the cubicula. Go. Sir Andrew exits. This is a dear mannequin to you, Sir Toby. I have been dear to him, lad, some 2,000 strong or so. We shall have a rare letter from him, but you'll not deliver it? Never trust me then, and, and by all means, stir upon the use to an answer. I think oxen and wain tropes cannot hail them together. For Andrew, if he were open, you find so much blood in his liver as will clog the, fl of the, of the fleet. I'll eat the rest of that anatomy. And his opposite, the youth? Bears in his visage no great prestige of cruelty. Enter Mariah. Look where the youngest run of mine comes. If you desire the spleen, and will laugh yourselves into stitches, follow me. Uncle Malvolio is turned heathen, a very renegado, for there is no Christian that means to be saved by believing rightly can ever believe such impossible passages of grossness. He is in yellow stockings. And cross guarded Most villainously, like a pendant that keeps a school in the church. I have dogged him like, I have dogged him like his murderer. He does obey every point of the letter into more lines than in the new map with the augmentation of it, the Indies. You have not seen such as tis. I can hardly forbear hurling things at him. I know my lady will strike him if she do. He'll smile and take it for a great favor. Ooh, come bring us, bring us where he is. They all exit. Enter Sebastian and Antonia. 
I would not by my will have troubled you, but since you make your pleasure of your pains, I will no further chide you. I could not stay behind you, my desire more sharp than filed steel did spur me forth, and not all love to see you, though so much as might have drawn one to a longer voyage, but jealousy what might befall your travel, being skillless in these parts, which to a stranger unguided and unfriended often prove rough and unhospitable. My willing love, the rather by his arguments of fear, set forth in your pursuit. My kind Antonia, I can no other answer make but thanks, and thanks, and ever off good turns, are shuffled off with such uncurrent pay, but were my worth as my conscience firm, you should find better dealing. What's to do? Shall we go see the relics of this town? Tomorrow, sir. Best first go see your lodging. I am not weary, and tis long tonight. I pray you, let us satisfy our eyes with the memorials and things of fame that do renown this city. Would you'd parted me? I do not without danger walk these streets. Once in a sea fight against the count his galleys, I did some service. Of such note, indeed, that were I taken here, it would scarce be answered. Be like you slew great number of his people? The offense is not of such a bloody nature. I'll bite the quality of the time and quarrel might well have given us bloody argument. We might have since been answered in repaying what we took from them, which, for traffic's sake, most of our city did. Only myself stood out, for which, if I be lapsed in this place, I shall pay dear. Do not then walk to open. It doth not fit me. Hold, sir, here's my purse. Giving him money. In the south suburbs at the elephant is best to lodge. I will bespeak our diet, whilst you beguile the time and feed your knowledge with viewing of the town. There shall you have me. Why I your purse? Happily, your eye shall lay upon some toy you have desired to purchase. In your store, I think, is not for idle markets, sir. I'll be your purse bearer and leave you for an hour. To the elephant. I do remember. They exit in different directions. Enter Olivia and Mariah. I sent after him. He said, he'll come. How shall I feast him? What bestow him? For youth is bought more off than begged or borrowed. I speak too loud. Where's Mavoyo? He's sad and civil and suits well for his favorite with my fortunes. <laughs> Where's Mavoyo? He's coming, madam, but in a very strange manner. He is sure possessed, madam. Why? What's the matter? Does he rave? No, madam. He does nothing but smile. Your ladyship, where? Best to have some guard about you if he come. For sure, the man is tainted in his wits. Go call him hither. Mariah exits. I am mad as he, if mad and... Ah, if sad and merry, madness equal be. Enter Mariah with Malvolio. How now, Malvolio? Sweet lady. <laughs> Smilest thou? I have sent for thee upon a sad occasion. Sad, lady? I could be sad. This does make some obstruction in the blood. This cause scattering, but uh, what's worse of that? If it please the eye of one, it is with me as the very true sonnet is. Please one and please all. Why, how dost thou, man? What is the matter of thee? Not. Black in my mind, though, yellow in my legs. <laughs> it did come to his hands, and command shall be executed. I think we do know the sweet Roman hand. Uh, wilt thou go to bed, Malvolio? To bed, my sweetheart. I will come to thee. God comfort thee. Why thou smile so, and kiss thy hand so oft? How do you, Malvolio? At your request? Yes, nightingales answer to doors. Why appear you with this ridiculous boldness before my lady? Be not afraid of greatness. T'was well writ. What means thou by that, Malvolio? Some are born great. Huh? Some achieve greatness. What sayst thou? And some have greatness 
thrust upon them. <laughs> oh. Heaven restore thee. Remember who commended thy just a moment, my dearest. Thy, thy yellow stockings. <laughs> <laughs> thy yellow stockings? Yes, madam. And wish to see the cross started. Cross guarded? Go to, if thou art mad, if thou desirest to be so. Am I mad? If not, let me see thee a servant still. <laughs> Why, this is very midst of her madness. Enter servant. Madam, the young gentleman of the Count Orsinos is returned. I could hardly entreat him back. He attends your ladyship's pleasure. I'll come to him. Servant exits. Good Mariah, let this fellow be looked to. Where's my cousin Toby? Let some of my people have special care of him when I would not have him miscarry for half of my dowry. Olivia and Mariah exit in different directions. Oh. You come near me now. No worse man than said you to look to me. This can curse directly with the letter. <laughs> Cast thy humble slough, says she. Be opposite with kinsmen, surly with servants. Let thy tongue tang with arguments of state. Put thyself into the trick of singularity and face a reverend carriage, a slow tongue in the habit of some sir of note and so forth. I have lined her, but it is Joe's doing. And Joe make me thankful. And when she's sent away now, let this fellow be looked to. Fellow, not Malvolio, nor after my degree, but fellow. <laughs> Why, everything I tears together, that no dram of scruple, no scruple of scruple, no obstacle, no incredulous or unsafe circumstance. What can be said? Nothing that can be come, run them, go. Yes, oh, I'm getting tongue tied. I'm so in love with her. Nothing that can be can come between me and the full prospect of my hopes. Well, Joe. Not I, is the due of this. And he is to be thanked. Oh! <laughs> Enter Toby, Fabian, and Mariah. Which way is he in the name of sanctity? If all the devils have hell be drawn in little and Legion himself possessed him, yet I'll speak to him. Here he is, here he is. How is it with you, sir? How is it with you, man? <clears throat> Go off! I discard you. Lo, how hollow the fiend speaks within him. Did not I tell you, Sir Toby? My lady prays you to have care of him. Aha, uh -huh. does she so? Go to, go to, peace, peace. We must deal with him gently. Let me alone. How do you, Mabelio? How is it with you? What, man? Defy the devil. Consider he's an enemy to mankind. Do you know what you say? Law are you, and you speak ill of the devil, how he takes it at heart. Pray God he be not bewitched. Carry his water to the wise woman. Mary, and it shall be done tomorrow morning if I live. My lady would not lose to him for more than I'll say. How now, mistress? Oh, Lord. For thee, hold thy peace. This is not the way. Do you not see you move him? Let me alone with him. No way, but gentleness. Gently, gently. The fiend is rough and will not be roughly used. Why, how now, my Valcock? How dost thou, Chuck? Sir! I, Biddy, come with me. One man, tis not for gravity to play a cherry pit with Satan. Hang him, foul him, collier. Get him to say his prayers, good Sir, Re so sir Toby. Get him to say, <laughs> get him to pray. <laughs> my prayers, me. No, I warrant you. 
He will not hear of godliness. Go hang yourselves, all of you. Ugh, you are idle, shallow things. I am not of your element. You shall know more hereafter. He exits. Is it possible? If this were played upon a stage now, I could condemn it as improbable fiction. His very genius hath taken the infection of the device, man. Nay, presume now, lest the device take air and taint. Why, we shall make him mad indeed. The house will be the quieter. Come, we'll have him in a dark room and bound. My niece is already in the belief that he's mad. We may carry it thus, for our pleasure and his penance, till our very pastime, tired, out of breath, prompt us mercy on him, at which we will bring the device to the bar and crown thee for a finder of a madman. But see, but see. Enter Sir Andrew. More matter for a May morning. Presenting a paper. Here's the, here's the challenge. Read it. I warrant there's vinegar and pepper in it. Isn't it so saucy? Aye, is it? I warrant him. Do but read. Give me. Youth whatsoever thou art, thou art but a scurvy fellow. Good and va valiant. Wonder not nor admire it, not in thy mind why I do call thee so, for I will show thee no reason for it. A good note that keeps you from the blow of the law. Thou comest to the Lady Olivia, and in my sight she uses thee kindly, but thou liest thy in my throat. Thou is not the matter I challenge thee for. Very brief and to exceeding good sense, less. I will waylay thee going home, where if it be thy chance to kill me. Good. Thou hast killest me like a rogue and a villain. Still you keep of the windy side of the law. Good. Fare thee well, and God have mercy upon one of our souls. He may have mercy upon mine, but my hope is better. And so look to thyself, thy friend, as thou usest him, and thy sworn enemy, Andrew Agichi. Oh, if this letter move him not, his legs cannot. I'll give it to him. He may have very fit occasion for it. He is now in some comments with my lady and will by and by depart. Uh, go, Sir Andrew. Scout me for him at the corner of the orchard like a bum bailey. So soon as ever thou seest him, draw. And thou drawest, swear horrible, for it comes to pass off that terrible oath with a swaggering accent sharply twanged off, gives thee manhood more approbation that ever prove itself would have it earned him. Away. Nay, let me alone. Nay, let me alone for swearing. He exits. Now will not I deliver this letter, for the behavior of the youth gentleman gives him out of to be good capacity and breeding. His employment between his lord and my niece confirms no less. Therefore, this letter, being so exceedingly ignorant, will breed no terror in the youth. He will find it comes from a clawed pool. But, sir, I will deliver his challenge by word of mouth, set upon Ag uh, Ague Chief, a notable report of valor. I will drive the gentleman, as I know his youth will aptly receive it, into the most hideous opinion of his rage, skill, fury, and impusity. This will so fright them both that they will kill one, one another by look, like cockatrice. Enter Olivia and Viola. Here he comes with your niece. Give them the way to take him, leave, and presently after him. I will mediate the while upon some horrid message for a challenge. Toby, Fabian, and Mariah exit. I have said too much unto a heart of stone and laid my honor to win cherry on it. There's something in me that reproves my fault, but such a headstrong, potent fault it is that it but marks reproof. Uh, with the same behavior that your passion bears goes on my master's group. Here, wear this jewel for me. Tis my picture. Yes, tis my picture. Refuse it not. It hath no tongue to vex you. And I beseech you, come again tomorrow. What shall you ask of me that I'll deny? That honor saved may upon us can give. Nothing but this, your true love for my master. 
How with my honor may I give him that which I've given to you? I will acquit you. Well, come again tomorrow. Fare thee well. A fiend like thee might bear my soul to hell. She exits. Enter Toby and Fabian. Gentlemen, God save thee. And you, sir. That defense thou hast, but take thee to it. Of what nature the wrongs are uh, thou hast done him, I know not Not by thy inter interceptor, full of despite, bloody as the hunter, attends thee at the orchard, dismount thy tuck. Be ye in thy preparation, for thy assailant is quick, skillful, and deadly. You mistake, sir. I am sure no man hath any quarrel to me. My remembrance is very free and quite clear from any image of offense done to any man. You'll find it otherwise, I assure you. Therefore, if you hold your price at, if you hold your life at any price, but take you your guard, for your opposite hath in him uh, what youth's strength and skill and wrath can furnish man withal. I pray you, sir, what is he? He is a knight dubbed with unhatched rapier and on a carpet of consideration. But he is a devil in a private brawl. Souls and bodies hath divorced three, and his incessant at this moment so implacable that satisfaction cannot be done by pangs of death and uh, sepulchre. Hobnob it in his word. Give it or take it. I will return again into the house and desire some conduct of the lady. I am no fighter. I have heard of some kind of men that put quarrels purposely on others to taste their vow. Be like this is a man of that quirk. Sir, no. His indignation de derives itself out of very competent ju injury. Therefore, uh, get you on and give him in desire. Back you shall not to the house, unless you undertake that with me, uh, which with uh, as much safety you might answer him. Therefore, on a, or a strip, your sword stark naked, metal for you must. That's current, or forswear to wear iron about you. This is as uncivil as strange, I beseech you. Do me this courteous office as to know of the night what my offense to him is. It is something of my negligence, nothing of my purpose. I will do so, Signor Fabian. Stay you, uh, stay you by this gentleman until my return. Toby exits. Pray you, sir, do you know of this matter? I know the night is incense against you, even to a mortal arbitrament, but nothing of the circumstance more. I beseech you, what manner man is he? Nothing of that wonderful promise to read him by his form, as you are like to find him in the proof of his valor. He is indeed, sir, the most skillful, bloody, and fatal opposite that you could possibly have found in any part of Illyria. Will you walk towards him? I will make your peace with him if I can. I shall be much bound to you for it. I am one that would rather go with Sir Priest than Sir Knight. I care not who knows of my mettle. They exit. Enter Toby and Andrew. Why, man, he's a very devil. I have not seen such farrago. I had a pass with him, rapier, scabbard, and all, and he gives me a stuck in with such mortal motion that it's inevitable. And on the answer, he pays you as surely as your feet hits the ground they step on. They say he's been fencer to the Sophie. Pox on it. I'll not meddle with him. Uh, Aye, but he will not be pacified. Fabian can scarce hold him yonder. Plague on it, and I thought he had been so valiant and so cunning and fenced. I'd have seen him damn the area challenged him. Let him let the magic slip. And I'll give him my horse. Great Capulet. I'll make that motion. Stand here, make good show on it. This end without the perdition of souls. Mary, I'll ride your horse as well as ride you. Enter Fabian and Viola. Toby crosses to meet them. I have his horse to take up the devil quarrel. Uh, I have persuaded him the youth's a devil. He is as horribly conceited of him and pants and looks pale as if bear were at his heels. There's no remedy, sir. He will fight you with for oath's sakes. Mary, he better uh, bethought him as a, of his quarrel and he finds that now scarce to be worth talking of. Therefore draw your, the supporters of his vow. He protests he will not hurt you. Pray God defend me. A little thing would make me tell them how much I lack of a man. Give ground if you see him furious. Toby crosses to meet Andrew. 
Come, Sir Andrew, there is no remedy. The gentleman will, for honor's sake, have one bout with you. He cannot by the duello avoid it, but he has promised me. As a gentleman and a soldier, he will not hurt you. Come on to it. Pray, Pray God he keep his oath. Drawing her sword. I do assure you, tis against my will. Enter Antonia. Put up your sword. If this young gentleman have done offense, I take the fault on me. If you offend him, I for him defy you. You, sir? Why? What are you? Drawing his sword. One, sir, that for his love dares yet do more than you have heard him brag to you he will. Drawing his sword. Nay, if you be an undertaker, I am for you. Enter officer. Oh, good Sir Toby, hold. Here comes an officer. I'll be with you anon. Pray, sir, put up your sword, if you please. Mary will I, sir, and for that I promise you, I'll be as good as my word. He will bear you easily and reigns well. This is the woman. Do they office? Antonia, I arrest thee at the suit of Count Arsino. You do mistake me, sir. No, madam. No, Jot, I know your favor well. Though now you have no stick up on your head. Take her away. She knows I know her well. I must obey. This comes with seeking you, but there's no remedy. I shall answer it. What will you do, now my necessity, makes me to ask you for my purse. It grieves me much more for what I cannot do for you than what befalls myself. You stand amazed, but be of comfort. Come, madam, away. I must entreat of you some of that money. What money, madam? For the fair kindness you have shown me here, in part being prompted by your present trouble, out of my lean and low ability, I'll lend you something. My having is not much. I'll make division of my present with you. Hold, there's half my coffer. Offering him money. Will you deny me now? Isn't it possible that my deserts to you can lack persuasion? Do not tempt my misery, lest that I make me so unsound a man as to upbraid you with those kindnesses that I have done for you. I know of none, nor know, nor know I, nor I know you by face or any feature. I hate ingratitude more in a man than lying, vainness, babbling, drunkless, or any taint of vice, whose strong corruption inhabits our frail blood. Oh, heaven themselves. Oh, madam, I pray you go. Let me speak a little. This youth that you see here, I snatched one half out of the jaws of death. Relieved him with such sanctity of love, and to his image, which methought did promise most venerable worth, did I devotion. What's that to me? The time goes away. The time goes by away. But oh, how vile and idle proves this God. Thou hast, Sebastian, done good future shame. In nature there's no blemish but the mind. None can be called deformed with the unkind. Virtue is beauty, but the beauteous evil are empty trunks overflourished by the devil. The woman grows mad. Away with her. Come, come, madam. Lead me on. Antonia and officer exit. Methinks her words do, so, do from such passion fly that she believes herself. So do not I prove true imagination. Oh, prove true that I, dear brother, be not taken for you. Come hither, knight. Come hither. Fabian. We'll whisper, oh, a couple of two more sage saws. Toby, Fabian, and Andrew move aside. She named Sebastian. I, my brother, know yet living in my glass. Even such and so in favor was my brother, and he went still in this fashion. Color ornament for him I imitate. If it, oh, if it prove, tempests are kind, and so it waves fresh in love. She exits. A very dishonest poultry boy and more a coward than a hare. His dishonesty appears in leaving his friend here, in necessity in denying him. And for his cowardship, ask Fabian. A coward, a must devout coward, religious in it. Slid, I'll after him again and beat him. Do, cough him soundly, but never draw thy sword. And I do not. Come, let's see the event. I dare lay any money till nothing be yet. They exit, enter Sebastian and Fessy the Fool. Will you make me believe that I am not sent for you? 
Go to, go to. Thou art a foolish fellow. Let me be clear of thee. Well, hell out, I faith. No, I do not know you, nor am I not sent to you by my lady to bid you come speak with her. Nor your name is not Master Cesario, nor this is not my nose neither. Nothing that is so is so. I prithee, vent thy folly somewhere else. Thou knowest not me. Vent my folly? She has heard that word of some great man and now applies it to a fool. Vent my folly? I'm afraid this great lubber, the world will prove a cockney. I, I prithee now, unger thy strangers and tell me, what shall I vent to my lady? Shall I vent to her that thou art coming? I prithee, foolish Greek, depart from me. There's money for thee. Giving money. If you tarry longer, I shall give worse payment. By my troth, thou hast an open hand. These wise men that give fools money give themselves a good report uh, after 14 years' purchase. Enter Andrew, Toby, and Fabian. Now, sir, have I met you again? There's for you. He strikes Sebastian, returning to the <laughs> Why, there's for thee. And there, and there. Are all the people mad? Hold, sir, or I'll throw thee your dagger or the house. This will I tell my lady straight. I would not be in some of your coats for two pence. He exits, seizing Sebastian. Come on, sir, hold. Nay, let him alone. I'll go another way to work with him. I'll have an action of battery against him, if there be any law in Illyria. Though, I struck him first. Yet it's no matter for that. Let go, thy hand! Come, sir, I will not let you go. Come, my young soldier, put up your iron. You are well fleshed. Come on. I will be free from thee. He pulls free and draws his sword. Aha! What wouldst thou now? If thou darest tempt me further, draw thy sword. What? What? Nay, then. I must have an ounce or two of this malpert blood from you. He draws his sword. Enter Olivia. Hold, Toby. On their life, I charge thee hold. Madam? Will it ever thus ungracious wrench fit for the mountains and the barbarous caves, where manners never were preached? Get out of my sight. Be not offended, dear Cesario. Rudesby, be gone. Toby, Andrew, and Fabian exit. I pray thee, gentle friend, let thy fair wisdom, not thy passion sway, in this uncivil and unjust extent against thy peace. Go with me to my house, and hear thou there how many fruitless pranks this ruffian hath botched up, that there thereby may smile at this. Thou shalt not choose but go. Do not deny, but shrew his soul for me. He started one poor heart of mine in thee. What relish is in this? How runs the stream? Or am or I am mad, or else this is a dream. Let fancy still my sense and let thee sleep. If it's <laughs> a dream, still let me sleep. <laughs> Nay, come, I pray thee, would thou be ruled by me? Madam, I will. Oh, say so and so be. They exit. Enter Mariah, Fessy the Fool. Nay, prithee, put on this gown and this beard. Make him believe thou art Sir Topas the curate. Do it quickly. I'll call Sir Toby the whilst. She asks it. Oh, nice fit. Well, I'll put it on, and I will disassemble myself in it. And I would I were the first that ever disassembled such a gown. He puts on gown and beard. I am not tall enough to become the function well, nor lean enough to be thought a good student, but to be said an honest man and a good housekeeper goes as fairly as to say a careful man and a great scholar. Competitors, enter. Enter Toby and Mariah. Jove, bless thee, master person. Buenos dias, said Toby. Whereas the old hermit of Prague that never saw a pen and ink very wittily said to a niece of King Gorbada, that that is it. 
So I, being Master Parson, am Master Parson. For well, what is that but that, and is but is? To him, Sir Topas. For her, I say, she should just prison. The knave counterfeits well, a good knave. Bob Volio within. Who calls there? Sir Topish the curate, who comes to visit Malvolio the lunatic. Sir Topis, Sir Topis, good Sir Topis, go to my lady. How hyperbolical fiend, how vexest thou this man. Talkest thou nothing but of ladies? Well said, Master Parson. Sir Topis, never was man thus wrong. Good Sir Topis. Do not think I am mad. They have laid me here in hideous darkness. Fie, thou dishonest Satan. I call thee by the most modest, modest terms, for I am one of those gentle ones that will use the devil himself to purchase you. Seest thou that the house is dark? As held, Sir Topis. Why, it has bay windows, transparent as barricados, and their clerceries toward the south north are as lustrous as ebony. Yet, Complainest thou of obstruction? I, I am not mad, Sir Topis. I say to you, this house is dark. Mad man, thou art. I say there is no darkness but ignorance, in which thou art more puzzled than the Egyptians in their fogs. I say this house is as dark as ignorance though ignorance were as dark as hell, and I say there was never man thus abused. I am no more mad than you are. Make the trial of it in any constant question. What is your opinion of a Pythagoras concerning wildfowl? That the soul of our Brandon might happily inhabit a bird. What, sh thou sh th what thinkest thou of his opinion? I think nobly of the soul, and no way approve his opinion. Fair ye well, remain thou still in darkness. Thou shalt hold the opinion of Pythagoras here, I will allow thy witch. And fear to kill a woodcock, lest thou disposes the soul of thy grandam. Fair ye well. Sir Topis, Sir Topis! My most exquisite Sir Topis. Nay, I'm off for the waters. Thou might has done this without this, without thy beard and gown. He sees thee not. To him in thine own voice, and bring my word. Bring me word how thou findest him. I would we were well rid of this knavery. If he if he may be con conveniently de delivered, I would he were, were. For I am now so far an offense that with my niece that I cannot pursue with any safety the support upshot. Come by and imbibe to my chamber. Toby and Mariah exit. Say. He loves a nut. Who calls her? Huh? I'm so sorry, Mr. Good fool. As ever thou wilt deserve, well, at my hand, help me to a candle in pen, ink, and paper. As I am a gentleman, I will live to be thankful to thee for it. Master Malvolio? I, good fool. Alas, sir, how, how fell you beside your five wits? Oh, fool, there was never man so notoriously abused. I am well in my wits, fool, as thou art. But as well? Then you are mad indeed, if you be no better in your wits than a fool. They have profited me here, kept me in darkness, sent ministers to me, asses, and do all they can to face me out of my wits. I advise you what you say. The minister is here. Marvellier, Marvellier, thy wish the heavens restore. Endeavor thyself to sleep and live thy vain favorite babble. Sir Topis! 
May you change your ways with him, good fellow. Who? I, sir? Not I, sir. God buy you good, sir, Topus. Mary, amen. I will, sir, I will. Fool, 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 I say! Alas, sir, be patient. What say you, sir? I, I am shent for speaking to you. Good fool. Help me to some light and some paper. I told thee I am as well in my wits as, as any man in Illyria. Well a day that you were, sir. By this hand I am. Good fool, some ink, paper, and light, and convey what I will, will set down to my lady. It shall advantage thee more than ever the bearing of letter did. I will help you to... But tell me true, are you not mad indeed, or do you but counterfeit? Believe me, I am not. I tell thee true. Nay, I never believe a madman till I see his brains. I will fetch you light and paper and ink. Fool, I requite thee in the highest degree. I pray thee, be gone. I am gone, sir, and I'm on, sir. I'll be with you again, sir, in a trice, like to the old vice, your need to sustain, sir, with dagger of late in iteration is wrong, cries a heart to the devil, like a mad lad, and the hero's dead, are you good man dead? He exits. Enter Sebastian. This is the air. That is the glorious sun. This pearl she gave me, I do feel it and see it. And though tis wonder that enwraps me thus, yet tis not madness. Where's Antonia then? I could not find her at the elephant. Yet there she was, and there I found this credit that she did range the town to seek me out. Her counsel now might do me golden service, for though my soul disputes well with my sense, that this may be some error, but no madness, yet doth this accident and flood of fortune so far exceed all instance, all discourse, that I'm ready to distrust mine eyes and wrangle with my reason that persuades me to any other trust, but that, but that I am mad or else the lady's mad. And if it were so, so she could not sway her house command her followers, take and give back affairs and their dispatch with such a smooth, discreet, and stable bearing as I perceive she does. There's something in it that is deceivable, but here the lady comes. Enter Olivia and a priest. Blame this, not haze the mind, if you mean well. No go with me with this holy man into the tree tree by, there before him and underneath that consecrated roof. Play me the full assurance of your faith that my most jealous and too doubtful soul may live at peace. He shall conceal it while you are willing it shall come to know. What time will our celebration keep according to my birth? What do you say? I'll follow this good man and go with you. And having sworn truth ever will be true. <laughs> Then lead the way, good father, and heaven so shine, that they may fairly note this act of mine. They exit. Enter Fessy. Enter Fessy the full Fabian. Now, as thou lovest me, let me see his letter. Good master Fabian, grant me another request. Anything? Do not desire to see this letter. This is to give a dog and in recompense desiring my dog again. Enter Orsino, Viola, and Curio. Longing to the Lady Olivia, friends. Aye, sir, we are some of our trappings. I know thee well. How dost thou, my good fellow? Truly, sir, the better for my foes and the worse for my friends. Just the contrary, the better for thy friends. No, sir, the worse. How can that be? Mary, sir, they praise me and make an ass of me. 
now my foes tell me plainly I'm an ass so that by my foes, sir, I profit in the knowledge of myself and by my friends I'm abused. So that conclusions to be as kisses. If your four negatives make your two affirmatives, why then the worse for my friends and the better for my foes? Why, this is excellent. By my troth, sir, no, though it please you to be one of my friends. Giving a coin. Thou shalt not be the worse for me. There's gold. But that it will be double dealing, sir. I would you could make it another. Oh, you give me ill counsel. Put your grace in your pocket, sir, for this once. And let your flesh and blood obey it. Well, I will be so much a sinner to be a double dealer. There's another. Primo, secundo, tertio. This is a good play, and the old saying is, the third pays for all. The triplex, sir, is a good tripping measure. Or the bells of St. Bennet, sir, may put you in mind. One, two, three. You can fool no more money out of me at this throw. If you'll let your lady know I'm here to speak with her and bring her along with you, it may awake my bounty further. Mary, sir, lullaby to your bounty till I come again. I go, sir, but I would not have you to think that my desire of having is a sin of covetousness. But as you say, sir, let your bounty take a nap. I'll awake it anon. He exits. Enter Antonia and officer. Here comes the woman, sir, that did rescue me. That face of hers I do remember well. Yet when I saw it last, it was besmeared as black as Vulcan in the smoke of war. A bobbling vessel was she captain of. For shallow drought and bulk comprisable, with, with such scathful grip, gra uh, grapple did he make with the most noble bottom of our fleet, that very envy and the tongue of loss cried fame and honor on her. What's the matter? Orsino, this is that Antonia that took the phoenix and her fought from Candy. And this is she that did the tiger board when your young nephew Titus lost his leg. Here in the streets, desperate of shame and state, in private bravo did we apprehend her. Oh, she did me kindness, sir, drew on my side, but in conclusion put strange speech upon me. I know not what was t'was but distraction. Notable pirate, thou saltwater thief, what foolish boldness brought thee to their mercies with whom thou, in terms so bloody and so dear, hast made thine enemies? Orsino, noble sir, be pleased that I shake off these names you give me. Antonia never yet was thief or pirate, though I confess on base and ground enough, Orsino's enemy. A witchcraft drew me hither, that most ungrateful boy there by your side from the rude seas enraged in foamy mouth, did I redeem. A rack past hope he was, his life I gave him and did there to add my love. Without retention or restraint, all his in dedication, for his sake did I expose myself. Pure for his love into the danger of this adverse town, drew to defend him when he was beset where being apprehended his false cunning, not meaning to partake with me in danger, taught him to face me out of his acquaintance and grew a 20 years removed thing. While one would wink, denied me mine own purse, which I had recommended to his use, not half an hour before. How can this be? When came he to this town? Today, my lord, and for three months before, no one trim, not a minute's vacancy, both day and night did we keep company. Enter Olivia in attendant. Here comes the Countess. Now heaven walks on earth. But for thee, fellow, fellow, thy words are madness. Three months this youth hath tended upon me, but more of that anon. Take him aside. What would my lord, but that he may seem... Oh, excuse me. It's been a rough day for me. What would my lord, but that he may not have, for an Olivia may seem serviceable. Cesario, you do not keep promise with me. Madam? Gracious Olivia. What do you say, Cesario? Good, my lord. My lord would speak. My duty hushes me. If it be aught to the old tune, my lord, it is as fat and fulsome to my ear as howling after music. So, so cruel? So, so constant, lord. What? To perverseness, you uncivil lady, to whose ingrate and inauspicious altars my soul the faithfulest offsprings have breathed out that ever devotion tendered, what shall I do? Even what it please, my lord, that shall become him. 
why should I not had I the heart to do it? Like uh, to the Egyptian thief at point of death, kill what I love? A savage jealousy that sometimes savors nobly. But hear me this, since you do non-regardance cast my faith, and that I partly know the instrument that screws me from my true place in your favor, live you the marble-breasted tyrant still. But this your min minion, whom I know you love, and whom, by heaven I swear, I tender dearly, him will I tear out of that cruel eye where he sits crowned in his master's spite. Come, boy, with me. My thoughts are ripe in mischief. I'll sacrifice the lamb that I do love to spite a raven's heart within a dove. And I, most jocund, apt and willingly, to do you rest a thousand deaths would die. Where goes Cesario? After him I love, more than I love these eyes, more than my life, more by all mores than e'er I shall love wife. If I do feign you witnesses above, punish my life for tainting of my love. I am detested, how am I beguiled? Who does beguile you? Who does do you wrong? Hast thou forgot thyself? Is it so long? Call forth the Holy Father. Attendant exit. Come away. Whither, my lord? Cesario, husband, stay. Husband? I, husband. Can you deny that? Her husband, Sarah? No, my lord, not I. Alas, it is the baseness of thy fear that makes thee strangle thy propriety. Fear not, Cesario, take thy fortunes up, be thou knowest thou art, and then thou art as great as thou fearest. Enter priest. Oh, welcome, Father. Father, I charge thee by thy reverence here to unfold, though lately we've intended to keep in darkness what occasion now reveals before it is bright. What thou dost know hath newly passed between this youth and me. A contract of eternal bound of love, confirmed by mutual joiner of your hands, attested by the holy close of lips, strengthened by interchangement of your ring, and all the ceremony of this compact sealed in my function by my testimony since when my watch hath told me toward my grave i have traveled but two hours O oh, thou dissembling cub what wilt thou be when time hath sowed a grizzle on thy case or will not else thy craft so quickly grow that thine own trip shall be thine overthrow farewell and take her but direct thy feet where thou and i henceforth may never meet my lord i do protest Oh, do not swear. Hold little faith, though thou hast too much fear. Enter Sir Andrew. For the love of God, a surgeon! Send one presently to Sir Toby. What's the matter? Has broke my head across and has given Sir Toby a bloody coxcomb too. For the love of God, your help. I heard them 40 pound I were at home. Who has done this, Sir Andrew? The Count's gentleman. One... Cesario. We took him for a coward, but he's the very devil incarnate. My gentleman, Cesario? Oh, it's lifelines. Here he is. You broke my head for nothing, and that I did. I was set to do it by Sir Toby. Why do you speak to me? I never hurt you. You drew your sword upon me without cause, but I bespake you fair and hurt you not. If a bloody coxcomb be a hurt, you have hurt me. I think you said nothing by a bloody coxcomb. Enter Toby and Festy the Fool. Here comes Sir Toby halting. You shall hear more. But if you had not been in drink, he would have tickled you other gates than he did. How now, gentlemen? How's it with you? That's all one has hurt me, and there's the end to it. Saw it. Did it see Dick Surgeon saw it? Oh, he's drunk, Sir Toby, and uh, I were gone. His eyes were set at eight in the morning. Then he's a rogue and a passy measures paven. I hate a drunken rogue. Away with him. Who hath made this havoc with them? I'll help you, Sir Toby, because we'll be dressed together. Oh, will you help? A an asshead and a coxcomb and a knave, a thin faced knave, a gull. Get him to bed and let his hurt be looked to. Toby, Andrew, and Fulf, and Fabian exit. Enter Sebastian. 
I am sorry, madam, I have hurt your kinsman, but had it been the brother of my blood, I must have done no less with wit and safety. You throw a strange regard upon me, and by that I do perceive it hath offended you. Pardon me, sweet one, even for the vows we made each other, but so late ago. One face, one voice, one habit, and two persons? A natural perspective that is and is not. Antonia, oh my dear Antonia, how have the hours racked and tortured me since I have lost thee? Sebastian, are you? Fearest thou that, Antonia? How have you made division of yourself? An apple cleft is two is not more twin than these two creatures. Which is Sebastian? Most wonderful. Do I stand there? I never had a brother. Nor there be that deity in my nature of here and everywhere. I had a sister whom the blind waves and surges have devoured of charity. What can are you to me? What countryman? What name? What parentage? Of Messling, Sebastian was my father. Such as Sebastian was my brother too. So when he suited to his watery tomb, as spirits can assume both form and suit, you come to fright us. <gasps> a spirit I am indeed, but am in that dimension grossly clad, which from the womb I did participate. Were you a woman as the rest goes even, I should my tears let fall upon your cheek and say thrice, and say thrice welcome drowned Viola. My father had a mole upon his brow. And so had mine. And died that day when Viola from her birth had numbered 13 years. Oh, that record is lively in my soul. He finished it indeed as mortal act that day that made my sister 13 years. If nothing lets to make us happy both, but this my masculine usurped attire. Do not embrace me till each circumstance of place, time, fortune, do cohere and jump that I am Viola. Which to confirm, I'll bring you to a captain in this town, where lie my maiden weeds, but whose gentle help I was preserved to serve this noble account. All the currents of my fortune since hath been between this lord and this lady. So comes it, lady, you have been mistook, but nature do, nature do her bias drew in that. You would have been contracted to a maid, nor are you therein by my life deceived. You are bereaved both to a maid and man. Be not amazed, right noble is his blood. If this be so, as yet the glass seems true, I shall have share in, his, in this most happy rack. Boy, thou hast said to me a thousand times, thou never shouldest love woman like to me. And all those sayings I overswear, and all those sayings keep as true in soul as doth that orbit continent, the fire that severs day from night. Give me thy hand, and let me see thee in thy woman's weeds. The captain that did bring me first on shore hath my maid's garments. He, uh, upon some action, is now endurance at Mavolio's suit, a gentleman and follower of my ladies. He shall enlarge him. Enter Fessy the Fool with a letter and fade. Fetch Mavolio hither, and yet, alas, now I remember me. They say, poor gentleman, he's much distract, a most extracting frenzy of my own from my remembrance, curly banished his. How is he, Sarah? Truly, madam, he holds deals about at the stay's end as well as a man in his case may do. Has here writ a letter to you. I should have given it to you today morning, but as a madman's epistles are no gospels, so it skills not much when they are delivered. Ah, uh, open it and read it. Look then to be well edified when the fool delivers the madman. By the Lord, madam. How now? Art thou mad? No, madam. I, I do but read madness, and your ladyship will have it as it ought to be. You must allow Fox. Prithee, read it right, writs. So I do, Madonna, but to read his right wits is to read thus. Therefore, perpend my princess and give ear. <sighs> read it, you, Sarah. By the Lord, madam, you wrong me, and the world shall know it. Though you have put me into darkness and given your drunken cousin rule over me, yet have I the benefit of my senses as well as your ladyship. I have your own letter that induced me to the semblance I put on, with the which I doubt not, but to do myself I much right or your mind much shame. Think of me as you please. I leave my duty a little unthought of and speak up of my injury, the madly used Malvolio. Uh... Did he write this? Aye, madam. This savor is not much of distraction. 
See him delivered, Fabian. Bring him hither. Fabian exit. My lord, so please you, these things further thought on, to thank me as a sister, as a wife, when they shall crown thy alliance on it. So please, you, here at my house and at my proper cost. Madam, I am most apt to embrace your offer. Your master quits you, and for your service done him, so much against your metal of your sex, so far beneath your soft and tender breeding, and since you called me master for so long, here is my hand. You shall from this time be your master's mistress. A sister, you are she. Enter my volume, Fabian. Is this the madman? I, my lord, this thing. How now, Malvolio? Madam, you have done me wrong. Uh, <laughs> Notorious wrong. Have I, Malvolio? No. <sighs> Madam, lady, mm -hmm. you have. Pray you pursue that letter. You must not now deny it is your hand. Write from it if you can, in hand or phrase, or say, tis not your seal. It's your seal. Not your invention. You can say not of this. Well, grant it then, and tell me in the modesty of honor, why I have, why you have given me such clear light of favor. Bad me come, come smiling and cross-guarded to you to put on yellow stockings. Yellow stockings, and to frown upon certain be and the lighter people, and acting this in an obedient hope, why you have suffered me to be imprisoned, kept in a dark house, visited by the priest, and made the most notorious geck in gold that ever invention played on. Tell me why. <laughs> Alas, my boy, yeah, this is not my writing, though I confess much like the character. But out of question, tis Mariah's hand. And now I do bethink me, it was she first told me thou was mad, then came a smiling in such forms which here were presupposed upon thee in the letter. Prithee, be content. This practice hath most surely been passed upon thee. But when we know the grounds and authors of it, thou shalt be both the plaintiff and the judge of thine own cause. Good, madame, hear me speak. And let no queer and no no broke to come. Taint the condition of this present hour, which I have wondered at. In hope it shall not, most freely I confess, myself and Toby set this device against Malvolio here. Upon some stubborn and courteous parts we had conceived against him. Maria read this letter at Sir Toby's great importance, and recompense whereof he hath married her. How, with the sportful malice it was followed, may rather pluck on laughter than revenge. If that injuries be justly weighed, that have on both sides passed. Alas, poor fool, how they baffle thee. Why, some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrown upon them. I was one, sir, this, in this interlude, one, Sir Topher, sure. But I shall warn, by the Lord, fool, I am not mad. But do you remember, madam, why laugh at you such barren rascal? And you smile not. He's gagged, and thus the royal gig of time brings in his revenges. Revenges? I'll be revenged on the whole pack of you! He acted. <laughs> he has been most notoriously abused. Pursue him and entreat him to a peace. Some exit. He hath not told us of the captain yet. When that is known and golden time convince, a solemn combination shall be made of our dear souls. In the meantime, sweet sister, we will not part from hence. Cesario, come, for so you shall be while you are man. But when in other habits you are seen, Orsino's mistress and his fancy's queen. All but the full exit.
Swaggering 